Mac 的我的 Watch。大家好，啊，上午好，非常非常开心，啊，又有机会能。So I'm very happy today to attend the CNCF conference today, and、uh, today we're going to talk about Thanos today. And、uh, I want to thank the previous speakers for the introduction, the kind of like a background for us. And today we are going to talk about how we use Thanos to achieve high availability and scalability. So, self-introduction. So, my name is Qin Guoan, and I joined Alibaba in 2016, and、uh, I work in container or、uh, about container in the host, and、uh, now I work for Kubernetes and SRE. And my colleague joined our team in 2018, and mainly responsible for. The data deployment eco、uh, ecological system, and、uh, he's mainly responsible for that part. And、uh, today we're going to go through four parts. There was firstly we're going to make a brief background introduction. Why we do this? What what is the meaning? And the second one, we're going to talk about. The construction process, and the third, how we use decentralization data, and how it evolves, and the fourth, and the visions that we have for the future. And for the first,、uh, I will be responsible for the first two parts, and、uh, my colleague Li Tao will go through the last two parts. And firstly, what is the background? So. Before we start, I want to do some scenario analysis. How can we use that data? And、uh, this is the policy engine, and、uh, this is what Alibaba wants to.、Uh, the project that we are going to have in Krista. And what what is the meaning of it? So it's that when the contain there's conflicts, we can adjust the QS to ensure the stability of our resources and、uh, our business. And the second is the center scheduler. So for instance, in there are a lot of scenarios we need online and、uh, offline deployment at the same time, and、uh, all those. Offline deployment can be used, and how can we better execute the data? And also, we have an algorithm team to analyze. Whether the algorithm that we use is reasonable, and also next we have a resource operation, and it can see that for the business growth and the business change that we can. Actually, plan the server, and because every year Alibaba will buy a lot of server, and our resource operation can make sure that what kind of server that we need to buy to. Catch the need to meet the needs of our future servers, and also dashboard is mainly responsible for our data management. And、uh, this is kind of like a use case scenario analysis for us. And、uh, next, what is our plan, and what is the capability that we are trying to have? First, so we want to have this kind of instrumentation. We need to have this capability to identify problems, and、uh, we need to analyze and、uh, solve the problems. And also on the left, you could see that we have a lot of data on the time series, and、uh, including hardware metrics, OS metrics, application metrics, and、uh, they are all stored in the time series. Server and、uh, on the, that basis, you could see that the time series implementation and、uh, we can have we can monitor the dashboard and、uh, we can have these kind of like、uh, data coverage and. We can build a lot of capabilities and、uh, this kind of like、uh, expansion of our automation, and、uh, we can have monitoring and、uh, error alerting, and、uh, use this data to optimize our container and、uh, achieve higher sales. 
and detain now the right. So how can we use those data to solve our problems? You may see that all those you, you may know that all those problems are large scale. So we have those problems on some version of kernel and the time series database have this kind of aggregate capability and it can be stored in the database. It not only includes metrics but also include events. So uh, so all those Kubernetes system metrics are also installed in there. So it's kind of like an offline database. So on that basis, we will have these other capabilities. Our algorithm engineer and will do their work, and uh, our data analysis team will also do their work on those bases. And our DevOps engineer can do some operations on the analysis that we have. So this deployment system and all those key capabilities that we want to have. So those are the analysis that we have. And next, the, so on the capabilities that we have and uh, what is the architecture that we are going to have, actually we have these two parts. The first part is the customer end. So for the customer end, it consists of two. So it's called Wally. So you might actually see the I've actually watched uh, the movie. So Wally in robot mobile uh, in Wally E. So actually in Wally this movie. It's just uh, that's how we get the name and uh, we get these kind of like storage and we have persistent data and. Uh, with this data will be put in the observability database and uh, we use it as a paper data that matrix and uh, we do it and this we need to ensure a long life cycle to have a long serving lifetime and if we have a problem so we need to make sure that data stays there so this container storage we have a lot of, of those containers and the kubelet fails we can not see that those kubernetes fail so we need to make sure the data is successfully can be successfully retrieved and we have this adapter and uh, inference star and the metric server and the VPA, they are actually connected, all those seven systems. So that was the first part, we introduced the background, and the second, we are going to talk about the not agent. So how we actually achieve the functions of Wabi. So the design principles. So we actually have several design principles, and the first is availability. We need to ensure high availability, and it will not fail easily. So there are three small, little principles. So we need to have independent metrics, and also we need to have this kind of low dependency and uh, it will not have any effect on that. And uh, if there's no accident, we will never restart the system. And uh, the second is high performance. That's also an important principle that we have. And we, if we have like a policy engine that needs to use our data, we have this QS adjustment, and uh, we need to have this high performance local query capability and a future prediction capability, and have this kind of like real time query and uh, this kind of like future prediction. And the third principle is low cost because for everyone who work for agent if we run an agent it costs a lot of resources it's just not reasonable so we need to con control the cost so there are also two small print uh, sub principles so we need to use less cpu and we need to make sure that we only pull one metric for one time and uh, Maybe there are a lot of duplicates, but maybe like a lot of people are doing it and I'm doing it. So, but for us in Alibaba, we only do it for one time. 
因为我们现在的磁盘都非常大了 the overall architecture. So these are mainly divided into two types. First is the main process demo. They just collect the data from different data sources, and uh, they are four components under it. First, the aggregator, which is mainly responsible for um, aggregating many of the data into a new one. For example, the encounter to uh, aggregate into a gauge one. Or, for example, if you have many uh, containers, you want to do an average of them. We can do them in this. An exporter API is mainly used for our centralized storage. So for example, export uh, promises, so our uh, central storage can get the data easily. And the query API can just check the data change in the past or predict the change of the data in the future. And the specter is mainly used to to collect different kinds of data through our various plugins. And for the second, in our plugins, we have support many kinds of plugins like Node, a kernel, container storage, and later on we will have uh, like uh, network. We have many plugins, and uh, I would like to use Node plugins as an example. We have achieved several um, uh, interval. And the name interval and clamp According to my previous introductions, you can predict that actually these are the intervals that uh, Scraper might use. So every time uh, Scraper wants to uh, collect, they will just, uh, according to this interval, to define how long to collect next time. And uh, root is uh, cooperated with aggregator, and they can just uh, get all the rules that we are using today. And uh, according to some of the uh, database to do the aggregation export, for example, today I've already have too much data according uh, whether it is the original or the one that we've got later on, and they can be defined in export. For example, I have got 20 of the CPU, and only two to three of them can be used today. So uh, these are the two parts. One is our main process, and second is the plugins, how to use. So when the main process needs to visit the plugins, and the plugins can be started, and once they have visit, finished visiting, and these plugins will just be closed, you can imagine that every time uh, they will be launched, and to be used in the socket. And once I have operated this function and this plugin can be closed, this can also reduce our system overhead in the maximum extent. And all the container function, once you have upgraded and next time you uh, use it, they can be upgraded automatically. And these are an introduction. And next, I would like to introduce the practice ways and First of all, we have 
chosen the Prometheus TSDB engines and used the storage of Prometheus, we have uh, uh, put them into our single machine to do some small changes so that to guarantee the current data uh, that we're going to use uh, or stored. So actually, TSDB, TSDB engine has a quite excellent performance, and also they have um, many of the simple function embedded in it, and they have realized the TSD um, uh, this kind of uh, construction and compress. And later on, for our plugins, we have chosen Go plugins, and you can just search it online. So we have achieved the standardization of all the intervals, interface of the plugins. And this, this um, later on, we have also achieved the a, a combined HTTP API. That is the Prometheus query ability because they need to be used for the local query and also when our central in centralized storage, when they are grasping data, we can provide them the data that they need. And also we have achieved even store uh, functionality. We know that some of the formats of the data cannot be stored and we need to store them in another way, for example, like these events, like GSB, and whether uh, what, what kind of formats they are, they can just store locally. These are the some of the implementations that we are using now. And uh, lastly, I'd like to uh, uh, appreciate our open source committee and also all our engineers contribute to this open source community. So since we can achieve this kind of fast developing and uh, aggregation because we have already sending a very high standing point, we have leveraged the advantage we have used uh, Go Long and we have used Go Plugin to achieve the ch reformation, uh, renovation, and also we have used uh, PrimQL and some of the technologies there. So in these slides, I would like to briefly introduce that many of us here today you shouldn't have data locally. So what is the meaning of it? And this graph can briefly introduce that actually for our quality engine, how to adjust the QS to guarantee the stability of the business. We can see that actually for this, the response time of this business is normal, but once this uh, res resource sharing is appearing and it has some changes. So actually, we can use the technology to discover some of the um, irregular things and this kind of uh, uh, some changes and differences in it to guarantee its normal function, to guarantee the stability of the business. So these are some of the process that we have gained. If you have the interest in the policy engine and you can see the craze uh, of the open source speaks. And next, I would like to invite my partner Li Tao to introduce uh, our how can we use Prometheus and Thanos in our centralized storage. Well, uh, hello everyone, and I would like to introduce in Alibaba and some of our experience in using Prometheus and Thanos. First of all, I would like to introduce Prometheus because um, initially uh, they are a kind of um, system monitoring and alarming package, and in 2016 they have uh, CNCF, joined CNCF, which is uh, independent open source program and also many of the companies and the organizations they have joined the Prometheus and they have very active developers and uh, users community. Also through Kubernetes and the console uh, or documents they can just uh, identify our object and based on the ATP 
through pool to uh, get the data, uh, object data. And also Prometheus support the alarm system and can send the alarm data to an uh, independent Manage, management tool and also Prometheus is sporting a very flexible uh, checking language and can, can uh, be used uh, for many dashboards. And as for our Prometheus, this kind of multi dimension. Um, language, but not only for the monitor of the machine, but also for the microservice architecture. And next, so from the kind of a scalability plan of Prometheus, I would like to illustrate on this. While we are deploying the Prometheus, the commonly used uh, ways, we will just uh, just consider from different clusters and uh, schedule the different resource for them. And this is usable, suitable for the scenario that we have thousands of machines. And for this kind of working mode, they don't need to go to the uh, public network and can reduce the unnecessary overhead in the network. Also, this kind of deployment method can satisfy the demand of many SMEs. But in a scenario of Alibaba, we have uh, uh, several dozens of the clusters and uh, we have over hundred thousands of the pods. So we cannot maintain it through this way. And also, a very big problem of it is that if we want to check a service of its current function in all the machines, we cannot do it. We don't have a general view. And another way of scalability is that maybe your cluster is not big enough, but still you're facing the kind of um, a loading pressure of a Prometheus. So we can uh, build a Prometheus for every application. So if your application is also enlarging, then this method is not uh, suitable at all because for Alibaba, we have uh, over tens of thousands of applications. So this method cannot be used in this scenario. Also for Prometheus, in order to solve this kind of general view problem, they have uh, uh, used a federation and they can just uh, input the data from another architecture and to have a hierarchy monitoring system. So if you want to see the request of every second per second in every machine, and we can just uh, collect the data, all of the data in this machine, in this room. And also, in the core machine room, we can just uh, deploy um, Prometheus and to get the data after the application. So Thanos can check the relevant data from the general uh, Prometheus and to get the sum and to know the uh, request per second of this service. But the problem is that, first of all, you need to manage the aggregation rule. When you have too many aggregation rules, it's a problem for you to maintain and manage them. And also for the federation, uh, they are more useful for uh, getting the data after the aggregation. And also, the actual uh, data. Uh, so uh, I think that's probably problematic. Uh, so you can see that it also has something to do with the performance and uh, scalability issue. And uh, the because the data cap, uh, data storage is just huge, and when you pull the data out, and uh, they will face a problem, they will be a bottleneck of calculating the data. <laughs> And so you will have a lot of like monitoring. So you need cannot support all the service that you need to provide. And uh, 
Additionally, so this kind of like federation, it also has a lot of problems. So if you pull the whole data out and they will be have the data query and it will pull all the data out and uh, it's kind of like a queuing of the texts and the cost will be some behind and there will be some reliability issue. So when we were doing this, so we were talking about we need to lower the dependence on the outside and uh, if we introduce another Prometheus, then there's another point that might have a failure. So if we transfer data on the public website, the risk is even higher. So when you use federation, you need to consider how can you use this kind of like data monitoring mechanism on the higher data and instead of using higher Prometheus and also this kind of for the federation to work, there will be a problem. So the data you pull might be lying behind, and you might lose your data. For in instance, if you use public network, and uh, when it runs out of time, the data might be lost. And uh, when, if it's just a demo, you can tolerate this kind of error. But if you pull out all the data, the error will be magnified, and this is not acceptable. Another thing is another thing that we could use for to scale Prometheus is actually have this kind of like federation and use this kind of like scalability and this plan also has a problem because for each Prometheus when you have this kind of like an algorithm to pull the node of metrics and uh, on each case scenario you have this kind of like a different aggregating rules and on the central Prometheus we put data out and then the biggest problem is that the maintenance cost is extremely high and uh, the plan would be super complicated and so in the mechanical room we have like tens of thousands of like this kind of similar structures so the issue would be quite complicated so if we want to achieve this kind of like high availability so you can see that in our environment in every minute we cannot accept this kind of like uh, status because we need to we need a higher availability so we need to have multiple prometheus and have this kind of like similar data and use similar configs to pull similar data out and uh, use this kind of like a uh, federate. So the the biggest issue here is that for the ca each case that you run is independent, there will be a latency in each case and there will be minor differences. And uh, if we use this kind of like global view and have this kind of a data query, there will be some difference. Maybe, when, for instance, if you refresh the page, it turned out to be different. And we need to align this kind of like Prometheus, so make the connection the different Prometheus and uh, send the require uh, send the query to a same Prometheus. But this also brings another problem. So this will waste the resources of other Prometheus and uh, all the query can only go to one Prometheus and other Prometheus are res only responsible for pulling out data and uh, the resources are not fully utilized. So Prometheus actually has a lot of tools that can be used for scalability, but it does have a lot of problems. And in the community, we do have solutions. So in the end, we decided to use Thanos. Thanos actually have this kind of a compatible API. So they have this long-term metrics retention engine, and they have unlimited data retention and storage. So. I will not go into details. I just uh, want to tell you how we use Thanos for our global view and what is our experience. So this is how Thanos work with Prometheus. So this is the most common deployment. So it actually has two parts, sidecar and query. 
So Sidecar uh, is deployed with Prometheus and uh, the query can be put in all those different clusters. So they are compatible in so when you send uh, a query request to the query and you can and those will be further sent to the sidecar which will pull out the data and send it to the central central Kubernetes nodes and send it back to the customers and uh, because of the instability of federation, and these actually effectively solve the problems of availability and it can help us to get all the data. And I also want to add that when you when we use Prometheus, there was one problem that if you have like kind of like a service needs to work across like different segments and uh, the functions that we had could not work in that case of a uh, net scenario, but Thanos could work. And uh, that's how this kind of like global view deployment that we have. So in our mechanical room, we have these query deployments and it connects to, to different query systems and uh, forms this entire system and uh, all the data will be sent from the main cluster to the subclusters in different mechanical rooms and will be returned to the client and uh, this actually helped to address Alibaba's issue in most of the cases and uh, Thanos could help us to support our uh, data storage requirements. And also some other works that we did and uh, in the customer target discovery. So you could see that because, for instance, we have not enough data storage or some other issues, so we need Prometheus to stop automatically pulling our data. So for Kubernetes and uh, this kind of like discovery system, so actually Thanos could help us to address the issue. It supports Kubernetes and uh, in Alibaba because our business and our some other historical issues because of all those elements. So we have this Kubernetes and other discovery system. So we developed this kind of like components, the custom made target discovery. So it can verify all the data. It will work with the same format, same as Prometheus, and Prometheus can then answer our requirements accordingly, and also configuration management. So if it's just one or two Prometheus, you can manage it manually, but we have so many Prometheus, and also we have this kind of like change of configurations of Prometheus, and uh, there's no centralization tool for Prometheus, so we actually developed a tool ourselves. So we have this kind of like central management tool and uh, users could actually send this kind of like change of configuration and we use Sidecar to put in on the side of the Prometheus and uh, it will synchronize all the data and put it locally and Prometheus can load the data when you send a request. So it actually helped us to address the issue. Last part is thinking about the future. So when we use Thanos and Prometheus, for, like it's been a while now, so we've been thinking that what are the enhancements, what are the, what are the things of, like they can improve? So we think like the most important thing is authentication because security is top priority. and. Uh, it is quite important for us to use this kind of like authentication process and help us to authenticate who are the users that we have and to have these authorized uh, requests and to authorize them to only use part of the data and to have these kind of like targeted management methods and uh, to have a more precise target and flow control. And the second, we about to query cache and uh, we um, Actually, when we rewrite these kind of like data, we need them to be cannot be like remodified. And uh, whenever you check it, the data should be the sh same. And we need to 
for the time knots and uh, every data, we need to return the data and then store it locally so we can re uh, go back to the data quickly. And uh, third is query safeguards. I think Thanos and uh, Prometheus both have this kind of function, but we need more precise management. Fourth, we want them to be integrated with Apache Flink, so the calculating capability of us can be enhanced. So we can integrate with Apache Flink and uh, support more calculating capabilities. There's a problem with Prometheus is that it's a single, like um, it's a single host, and then when you run it, they will have some bottlenecks in terms of the calculating. So this is all we want to share. Thank you very much. Any question? <laughs> so actually, I do have a question uh, because we ha monitoring. So what is what are the strategies when you monitor the cold and uh, warm and hot data, and what is the differences? between online and offline data. So for the first question, so actually what what is the the strategies that we what are the strategies that we use actually for for the data that we have So actually, it has actually run from 10 seconds to minutes, and even to hours, they are different. But then we can make sure that for the important data, the, the particle need to be small, and that it need to be fine-grade monitoring, and uh, the grain need to be finer. So it's just not like one time data or alerting data, if it's like long time away from this, maybe we will have compactable sample and the retention, maybe we'll delete the data. So actually the strategies are quite complicated. So if you have specific requests, we can talk later in details because I cannot summarize it in one or two sentences. The t second question, I can't remember, could you please repeat it? So the second question is, so what is the, like the particle, the grain? And also for the online and the offline data, the, what is the response time? So for the online data, so it's actually real-time data. So we actually pull the data every 10 seconds. The latency is quite low. And uh, when we... Quite, so we have opportunity for another question. So I'll just answer this question for So when we send the data to question Q and uh, we don't have this kind of like um, we will just have this long term and the Prometheus local retention so it's within seconds the latency will not be long and also the APAC flink so we will have more alerting and aggregating rules in the future one more question So in, I, I noticed that you didn't use object storage by Thanos, so you actually locally store the data by Prometheus. So for every data center, how do you store the data by like by segments or I mean how is the deployment or Kubernetes? Or is it on the Kubernetes or, phys or virtual or physical or virtual host? So actually for long-term storage, our cloud, we actually have our own object storage. We have Pangu. Thanos, it has long-term storage, but the interface is not connected. So we have this Pangu interface. And uh, in allowing object storage, and uh, also all these kind of like data, we want to store it locally. But we do have some problems that when we have replication, we actually 
For every one of us, we store a lot of storage, and when a paper is broken, and we need to copy paste it one on one, and uh, we don't have a lot of like original sources, and we do have a have this kind of like long term. Intention. And for also, for Kubernetes, we, whether we run it on Kubernetes or physical host. So actually, on a lot of scenarios, if it's just a small scenario, and if you scale it up, and if it's like uh, tens of thousands, the Prometheus can be managed on Kubernetes, and also the Thanos can be also you used to manage all those data. But in our case, we have so much data, and we cannot run the data on Kubernetes. We have like thousands or tens of thousands of cases. The capability will be too small. And also second, because the link is actually connected to stability of the whole system, if we have failure, we need to make sure that the link will be not affected. And uh, we, un we don't put Kubernetes of the business side with us. And uh, also we have these kind of independent Kubernetes and to actually change and to make it adapt to a large case scenario and we're still in revolution and we still run it on the container so at home itself, if, if you have any question please contact us thank you